Marta, Brazil. Abby Wambach, USA. Who will be the FIFA Women's World Player of the Year 2014? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage Nadine Kessler from Germany. Marta from Brazil. And Abby Wambach from the USA. Thank you so much for being with us this afternoon, just a couple of hours before the long-awaited uh, FIFA Ballon d'Or Gala. Before we speak about the Women's World Cup, which will be obviously the, probably the biggest topic of, of the day since it's going to be kicked off in a couple of months in uh, Canada on the 6th of June to be precise, I'd like to get your views on the development of women's football. We asked the question to the coaches who were on stage just before you a minute ago. We'd like to get the views of the players on that. I'll start with you, Nadine. Also, ich glaube, dass um, unsere Sportart der Frauenfußball sich in den letzten Jahren I enorm think, entwickelt uh, hat. Um, ob es physisch, physisch ist oder auch um, von der Spielintelligenz technisch-taktisch, glaube ich, kann man deutlichen Fortschritt sehen. Die internationale Spitze wird immer enger und ich glaube auch in den einzelnen Ländern gibt es immer mehr Clubs, die in den Frauenfußball investieren. I agree with Nadine. Sem dúvida, o futebol feminino I think that the women's já. football has developed <coughs> tremendously Perdão. as of late. É, é nítido a, a competitividade, né? There is a great é deal of uh, e, e competitivity. Cada vez mais a modalidade. And I think uh, é, there is more mobility, uh, de uma certa forma, é, which of course also fosters development of the sport. De modo geral. Essa competitividade entre as atletas, and, uh, entre as equipes. competitiveness uh, amongst teams, é amongst Eu athletes, que a gente tem muito is extremely crescer, important. I think estamos we still have a long way to go, but we have already achieved a great deal. Uh, I think the same as Marta, you know, I think we've gone so, so far over the last decade since we've been playing, feels like. <laughs> um, but we do still have so, so much further to go. And I think you can see it in the club level. I think you see it at the federation level. More federations are putting money into their female programs, which are trying to give women an opportunity to just play soccer without having to hold a, a second job. And I think uh, with the help of our federations and FIFA, we can keep pushing the game forward so that all women who, who want to out there can play soccer and just play soccer for a living. For the first time ever, the uh, FIFA Women's World Cup will be played with 24 teams. Do you think this is also, this decision is also the result of the growing success of, of the women's game worldwide? And what do you feel this increased number of teams will bring to, to the competition? I'll start with you, Abby. Well, I think that it gives certain countries that normally wouldn't have made a World Cup an opportunity to see what it's like to play on the biggest stage. Uh, and yes, there may be some countries that uh, don't do as well as others, but think about those women. Think about the opportunities they're getting. Think about the opportunity of walking out on a World Cup pitch for the first time in front of a big crowd, playing against a Marta, playing against an Nadine. These are the moments that define people and that builds their character. And hopefully uh, that'll be just the start for them in their country, growing their sport in their country. And hopefully one day, you know, we will have even more teams playing in the World Cup, not only more teams, but all teams playing on a competitive level. What can I say after everything that um, Abby said? 
She Acho summed it up perfectly. Todas as atletas e, e, I think that, uh, e técnicos e enfim, dirigentes uh, acredita que isso coaches possa é, and club leaders ser um, um ponto positivo, né? Uh, Como ela acting disse, together talvez, will have a very positive effect. É, pela primeira As vez em mundial, said, não many teams will be there for the first time. De, Perhaps their level is not quite the same as others that have been uh, competing for more years. But I think it's a very important opportunity. And little by little, uh, they will get there. They will be better prepared. And their structure will improve and they will be getting more support from their respective federations. I think it's einfach eine wichtige Entwicklung ist. Jede Entwicklung braucht Zeit ähm, und ähm, dieser Prozess muss gegangen werden, einfach um langfristig ähm, auch dann wieder ähm, ja, neue Länder in die Weltspitze zu bringen, hervorragende Spielerinnen ähm, sozusagen auf äh, international, internationales Niveau zu heben und ähm, ich ähm, stehe dem Ganzen auch sehr positiv gegenüber. Another first uh, this year at this World Cup will be the introduction of goal line technology. Uh, what is your views on this? What are your thoughts on this uh, on this innovation, Marta? Ah, si, eu acredito que tudo que vem para somar é importante. Everything that adds to the uh, quality is important. I think gold line technology will help uh, things to uh, work better. There will be less doubts. And I think this is very positive um, development. And I hope it will be used in other competitions as well. Also für mich persönlich ähm, ist es auch well, eine, eine sehr interessante Sache. Ich glaube, alles, was wir wollen, ist ein fairer Wettbewerb und ähm, bestmögliche Ergebnisse, ähm, ja, die einfach nur nach der Leistung orientiert sind und äh, nicht durch eine unglückliche Entscheidung und, und dementsprechend wollen wir uns sehr auf die Ich total agree. Um, both Marta und Nadine, they hit it right on the head. Um, we want things to be fair, and as a goal scorer, I like to have more goals. So, gold line technology hopefully will help us, not hurt us. <laughs> <laughs> um, as I said earlier on, we received uh, some questions from football fans all around the world through social media. So, we're going to take the, the first one, which is actually addressed to all of you. Uh, it will come on the screen in a, in a second. And the question is, who was your inspiration to be a footballer when you were growing up? Abby. Um, interestingly enough, uh, coming from the United States, football wasn't necessarily the top sport. So for me, I looked up to the, to the other women on the national team um, back in the mid 80s. Yes, I'm very old. Um, but you know, the Mia Hams, the Michelle Akers, those are women I really looked up to and wanted to try to emulate my game after. Um, I'm lucky that uh, I was able to play with Mia for a few years to be able to learn from her. Uh, and of course, um, in America, you know, you have your male-dominated professional sports. So, you know, the, the Michael Jordans of the world, um, those are the people that I looked up to growing up. And I think it's amazing, uh, not only throughout my career, uh, but over the last 20 years uh, in soccer in the United States, we've grown so immensely that uh, Kids nowadays are looking up to some of the MLS players and are now getting the media coverage and the TV coverage to watch the, the English Premier League and La Liga and, and Champions League. So it's exciting to see how different things are changing in the United States. Marta? In my case, I started playing because it was really a means of surviving, of helping my family, and also of growing as a person, as a professional, but especially to help support my family. In those days, it was very difficult for women's football in Brazil. We had no uh, models, no uh, references. We uh, heard uh, speaking about people uh, like Petinha and others, but we had no possibility of looking at them, of seeing them, because there were so few of them. 
and we knew very little about e women's um football. One of uh, the athletes jogar, that I tried to uh, emulate então, was Rivaldo. Do, do, dos a, he was one of the first uh, role a, models me motivar, who inspired me and jogar, motivated me, the way he played. Um, I tried to compare myself to him, and that was the line I took. And uh, that's how I managed uh, to get to the national team and become the athlete I am today. For me personally, it was that I started very early playing football and I didn't have the possibility that early to really wonder who could serve as an example for me. I just wanted to play football and I grew up in a family where this was possible. And uh, very early I got hooked on football and uh, now suddenly it, take, it took a turn that I became a professional football player and then of course Zidane were for me top players and he impressed me by his personality and his intelligent way of playing. But also then of course the success of the um, women's team was very impressive. I mean, you had excellent players where, but the quality was so well that I really didn't choose anyone who would serve as an example, but I think overall, for me personally, the overall picture was the major push to keep me going and to try to move upward in the ranks. Thank you very much. I'm looking at the time, and we need to give a chance, of course, to uh, the reporters to ask uh, their questions. So it's, uh, it's now the time, actually, to open the floor to you. As before, please be so kind to give uh, your name and the name of your media organization before asking your question, please. Who takes the first one? Please. Over there. Bonjour, France Pierron, l'équipe 21. Good afternoon, uh, équipe 21. I have a question for Nadine. You're here for the first time on the podium, facing two real monuments of women's football. Is this enough for you, or do you want even more? Well, I'm extremely grateful and proud to be able to share the stage with these two extraordinary football players, and I'm really happy as it stands right now. Next question. My name is Martin Einstein from ESPN. Amy, uh, we'd like to know if... Uh, What's your opinion on the artificial turf that's going to be used for the next World Cup? And if you have a chance to meet with the FIFA uh, people that, to discuss about this. Yes, we had a meeting this afternoon and um, the, the dialogue was open. And I think that it's, uh, how could I say this in a positive way? Um, I think that FIFA has made their decision and they're sticking to it. And it's tough because as a female athlete, uh, we want to be treated equal and we want to be playing on grass. Uh, I think if you were to ask any player that is going to be participating in the Women's World Cup next summer, they would say that. Um, the powers that be, logistics, the timing, it just may not happen. And unfortunately um, for, for us players, there's going to be that point in which we just have to either move on uh, or keep fighting, and I think our, our meeting went really well today. Um, we had great discussion. We told them how we felt openly, candidly, and uh, FIFA heard us, I think. And so hopefully something can change, but if not, it's going to be about the, the World Cup. Uh, we are not going to get into the World Cup environment and continue to talk about it because we're going to all want to be winning the, that World Cup, and that's just going to be something that will take our attention away from what our real goal is at hand, and it's raising the trophy at the end of the tournament. Please. Hi, Mark McCadden from the Irish Daily Star. Just get the uh, nominees' thoughts on Stephanie Roach's goal, which is up for the Puskas Award, and do they feel that it is another boost uh, for women's football? <laughs> 
Bom, é, eu acredito que well, nós do futebol feminino estamos muito contentes com I think we're very happy with her, her nomination. This is the first time that a woman disputando esse prêmio, né? is amongst the finalists. Eu particularmente achei o gol dela excepcional. I thought her goal was exceptional. Para que ela possa levar And I'm really uh, rooting for her. <laughs> There is nothing I could possibly add to that statement. Abby, anything? Uh, fantastic goal. Does it get really much better? Uh, I'm sure maybe Marta, Nadine, you've scored goals better than that, but I haven't seen one recently. So, um, fantastic goal. I showed it to everybody that I knew. I think I retweeted it. So hopefully she gets at least a consideration. Great goal. Next question over there. Yeah, please. Hi, um, Graham Dunbar from the Associated Press. Can I, just picking up, Abby, can I s ask who was involved in the, um, in the meeting today? I mean, was the FIFA president involved? And also, do you think that maybe when Canada comes to bid for the Men's World Cup for 2026, that they should bid then with uh, artificial turf pitches, just to show that discrimination is absolutely not a factor, which is what they're saying? I can't speak about what the Canadian Federation will do in 2026. I have an idea, but the General Secretary was involved. A couple other uh, FIFA employees, executives were involved as well. Um, it was a good talk, and it was honest, and it was open. Um, you know, all I can say is that if we had more time, uh, if we had better dialogue over a year ago, two years ago, Uh, when these decisions were really being made. Um, maybe we could have put together a, a coalition sooner uh, to fight this, but um, some things in life are in moments out of your hands. And I think um, for me, it's sad because it will be my last World Cup. And uh, I really, really would love it to be on grass. But at the end of the day, we do all still have to play on the same surface. Um, I'm just going to be a whole heck of a lot more sore uh, after the tournament, that's for sure. Together with uh, the Secretary General of FIFA, who was at this meeting as well, Tatiana Henny, who is Deputy Director of our Competitions Division. She's, involved, she's in, uh, in charge of women's football, and she's also a former international player from, from uh, Switzerland. And as Abby said, it was, uh, it was very open dialogue, and actually uh, the Secretary General insisted very much Uh, in the talks with the players, Nadine was also there, uh, that uh, the dialogue, there should be the look for a more direct dialogue with players uh, in, in, in the future, and that was one of the outcomes of, uh, of these meetings. I take um, maybe one next uh, question, actually, sent through a fan, uh, through, uh, t by a fan through Twitter, and that next one is actually addressed to you, uh, Marta, It will come on the screen in a, in a second. Uh, and the question is, I would ask Marta if she thinks Brazil is prepared to the next Women's World Cup or if the main goal is the Olympic Games in Brazil the after. Marta. Of course Brazil is um, preparing for both competitions. The World Cup this year, and we're certainly uh, getting ready for that. Let's hope for this uh, title that uh, we have all been dreaming of. And uh, let's hope then uh, to um, play very well at the Olympics. We had a silver medal, but we'd like to have another one, not a bronze one. I think both are very important for women's football. We now have a different generation, a different project, and the way we're going at it is uh, very good, I think. And I hope we'll be able to show it during the World Cup and later during the Olympics. Abby, I think the next Twitter question is actually for you, and it is, I would ask, Abby Wambach, if she thinks they are prepared for what's to come in the Women's World Cup? I think, um, you know, we're five months away. Our strength and conditioning coach um, emailed me yesterday on my flight here. We're 147 days today, I guess. 
She does a countdown every day, which is semi-annoying. Um, I think that there's a lot of time between now and then, not too much, but a lot of time to prepare, to toy, to tinker with, with formations, with personnel. You know, having seven games in a World Cup times 90 minutes and, and maybe even more, 120, um, you're going to have to utilize a lot of your bench. And so having the extended roster is going to be really important that all players are ready, not only ready to play, but ready to contribute. And I think that's going to be the, def the, the defining and the deciding factor of who wins this next World Cup is those teams that have the deepest benches. And, um, and I know we will be ready come, come, come June, uh, but right now we're still... We're still uh, working on everything we possibly can to get to that point. We're getting closer to the end of this uh, press talk. One final question to all of you. You had a fantastic 2014. You're here today. Um, what's your main wish for 2015? Marta. Well, the main competition is the World Cup, of course. I hope not just uh, me, Marta, but uh, for the Brazilian team to write a uh, new history, a uh, very good history, with regard to the World Cup. I think uh, that uh, this will be uh, very important, not only for us, but for all athletes. We hope that we'll have a good year for the Brazilian team and also for my team in Rosengård in Sweden. Uh, we uh, will uh, be meeting uh, uh, Nadine in the quarterfinals, and I think it's very important. We need good things to happen in order to uh, move forward and to be uh, well prepared. Well, in my case, is that uh, we are still participating with our club in all three competitions. All doors are open for us, and I would very like, to, very much like to be back on my feet rather soon to be able to help my team. And uh, then I just hope to be back on the pitch really soon and then play for the national team. And uh, because we all have our mindset on the World Cup in Canada, and it's my dream, really, to participate in that competition and to bring in the positive successes of our club over the last few years and uh, to make Germany reach the final. Obviously, all three of us want to be on the top podium, raising the World Cup trophy at the end of the summer. That's, an, that's a no-brainer. But I think that we have a special opportunity every four years to, to showcase women's sports. This is our tournament. The Olympics is one thing, but this is our tournament, our sole tournament. And I think it's really important that we all continue to push the game forward and try to make it better, game in and game out. So my hope is that these games uh, not only are well fought, but are fun to watch, that are dramatic, that get people involved, that get people excited, that people want to watch these games. And I think that that, is a, that would be a dream come true for me, uh, not only to win, obviously, that's why we all do what we do to win championships, but in terms of a legacy and what I want to leave behind is the ability to say and look back, you know what, I helped grow this game, I helped make this game more popular and hopefully inspire those younger kids and the younger generation to do better, be bigger, and uh, break every re record that we all, that we all set. We're all looking forward to that. So tune in in June and July this year. Before we conclude, may I ask the three of you to stand up and uh, go to the center of the stage for a picture all together, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you.